So hi everyone, hi dear participants, dear speakers, and we're pleasure to welcome you in our third info days of Seeds of Bravery project. Today, topic is a deep tech incubators program. Our speakers will share all the details and benefits of participating in this program. If you will have any questions, please leave them in the comment box in the YouTube. My name is Jana. I'm a head of project and programs in the Ukrainian Startup Fund, and I will be the moderator today. With me, my colleagues, Maria Karpilovska, project manager at Funding Box, Peter Torstensman, CEO at Accelerace, Andrei Zaikin, founder and CEO at Yep Startup Accelerator, Carolina Ferreira da Silva, Plug and Play Tech Center Senior Partner Success Associate, and Fio Nula Wall, EU Programmers Coordinator at Axis Big. So welcome my colleagues, welcome uh, all participants. And we want to remind you right now that our Seeds of Bravery project funded by the European Union under the European Innovation Council. So let's start, uh, please next slide. And one more. Okay, so today we will have a lot of speech from our uh, speakers. So we'll have the overview of the support program, matchmaking activities, assess of investor and accelerators community, market discovery and market fast track programs, and of course, Q&A session. So for the first part of this info day, I would like to invite to the stage our first speaker, Andrei Zaikin, founder and CEO at Yep Startup Accelerator. Andrew, the Stage is yours, please. Hi, Anna. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, yes, I'm. My name is Andrzej Zarik, and I'm a founder and CEO of Yep Accelerator. And uh, I will tell more details today about the Deep Tech Incubation Program. And uh, yeah, please next slide, and I will start. Uh, thank you. Uh, so actually, uh, Deep Tech Incubator Program. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank you for our partners who contributed a lot to co-design this program. And as a uh, uh, lead of this activity, of this incubator, YEP will uh, collaborate with our partners from the consortium. The co-design partners is Vacuum Deep Tech Accelerator, Alto University, SSMTP, Plug and Play, DaVinci Labs, and Accelerase. All these partners have huge expertise, and will all startups can get benefits from the cooperation with them during this program. So, first of all, for whom this program? Uh, it's deep tech Ukrainian startups uh, that are at the TRL four and six level of technology readiness, and uh, actually, it's really close connected to the seats of bravery grand streams and it's for grand stream c uh, beneficiaries who will get a grant from this stream and will sign the grant agreement will be assigned to this deep tech incubation program it's a uh, like complementary non-financial support program which aimed to help startups to get to the next url level and close it to the market because of TRL 4 and 6, this means that startup usually have good technology, but not in the market yet, not have quite a lot of traction in the market. That's why the main goal and objectives of Deep Tech Incubation Program is to validate problem solution fit and product market fit. And uh, we will support startups to make it to the market, probably find the pilot clients, probably find the industry partners, and uh, make it to the next uh, TRL level. Uh, TRL uh, level. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, actually, about the program, about the timeline. Uh, program will last twelve weeks, and will consist of uh, individual mentor sessions, group mentor sessions, and group workshop and lectures. And uh, as I already mentioned, the main goal uh, will be the, to support startups to make it closer to the market. And uh, it will be split, it, let's say, on two parts. Uh, first part is first four weeks of the program. And this part is for uh, developing and elaborating of individual follow-up plan, which we will create and elaborate together with startup as a lead 
mentor as a partner of this incubation program. Yep, will support startups in creating and designing of this individual follow-up plan. This plan will uh, include all the metrics, KPIs, and achievement that supposed to get during this program during these 12 weeks. This individual follow-up plan will be a part of the deliverables that startups should submit to the committee and to the program to move on. And then next eight, 10 months, uh, sorry, eight, 10 weeks during the program, the mentors and partners will together with startup uh, implement this individual follow-up plan to give, to get uh, as best as we can results to achieve those metrics and KPIs that will be included into the into the individual follow-up plan. Accord, uh, as for timelines, we will start the first program in the mid of June, July 2024, which is related closely to their signing of first grant agreements after the first cut of date. And then we will have four cohorts. Second one will be in October, then in January 25th, and then last one in start will start in May 25th. Uh, so in general, we will have four cohorts, 15 startups in each, and in total it will be 60 Ukrainian deep tech startups uh, staged at TRL 4.6, which will benefit uh, from this program. Uh, next stage, uh, next slide, please. And uh, yeah, actually about the completion and about their, our expectations from startups during the program and what uh, startups should achieve. Uh, as I already mentioned, there will be the individual follow-up plan, which will be submitted to, to the program during the first month. This individual follow-up plan will be there like uh, as a deliverable, as an obligation kind of to work on and uh, together with mentors, together with Yep as a lead mentor and together with mentors which will be assigned uh, from different partners from consortium, uh, startups will work on these uh, achievements and uh, we need to uh, show the results and report the results in 12 weeks after the program. And uh, all these uh, results and report, uh, this is a deliverable the startup should submit uh, at the end of the program. And then evaluation committee will assess the results. And if their KPIs, metrics, and achievements uh, in, in general, this deliverable will, if will be access, uh, success, then startup will successfully finish the program and will get the grant uh, in format of lump sum afterwards, like 25K of the uh, more details about this eligibility criteria about evaluation will be presented uh, later on here today in this session. Also, one important point is uh, that uh, during the incubation program, startups which will participate also will have opportunity to benefit from other non-financial support program from Seeds of Bravery Partners and Metro Lines. And uh, these programs will be the market access program, access to investors and accelerators network, uh, matchmaking, and uh, all these opportunities will come during the program and mentors and lead mentors who will work with startups will uh, identify these opportunities for startups and much make them with uh, different partners and mentors outside the program to connect with other uh, opportunities. About these programs also, today we will have more details from our partners later on. Uh, from my side, uh, from my side, this is it. Probably I will be happy to answer your questions during the Q&A. Thank you so much, Andrew, for your speech. It was really brilliant. And now we're moving to the next part, part two overview of the support program. And uh, it's my pleasure to invite Maria Karpilovska, project manager at Funding Box Accelerator to the stage. Maria, this stage is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Anna, for the introduction. And thank you, Andrew, for, for uh, giving everyone the overview of uh, Deep Tech Incubators program. So just before I go into the financial details, I just want to rephrase what Andrew has 
also already said about the eligibility criteria. So when you are still before the stage where you will be applying for deep tech incubators, please remember about three things. Um, so we are looking for projects that, first of all, promote innovative solutions that can become some kind of key drivers in rebuilding Ukrainian economy and infrastructure. Please also remember that the projects we are looking for should have a Euro European dimension, uh, meaning the capacity to increase the footprint of Ukrainian uh, startups in the European innovation ecosystem. And the third thing, the TRL level should be for so uh, for deep tech incubators program, so technology validated in a lab, right? So so these are the entry criteria, and then. Once you get into the program, uh, which Andre has just presented, um, can I have the next slide, please? Thank you. Then beneficiaries usually have a lot of questions about the payments, uh, about reporting, about the financial transparency of the project. And I'm not sure how many of you participated in the previous info day. If you if you did, then I'll repeat myself here, but I think it's worth um, repeating. Uh, so if you are asking yourselves all those questions that you can see here in this slide about reporting actual costs, that seems pretty uh, scary and time and effort consuming or presenting us with some kind of receipts or invoices or timesheets for your, for your project team, then um, the answer is the lump sum methodology and lump sum mechanism for, for payments that we are using in the project. It's a simplified methodology for distributing funds uh, to beneficiaries. It means that you provide us with the cost estimate for each cost category. Then the costs that you estimate, they must be uh, approximately what your actual costs are. And once you complete, uh, as you complete project milestones, the payments are are released. So that's about um, lump sum in a nutshell. So can we go to the next slide, please? Okay, so... Uh, here you can see the difference maybe between what the lump sum mechanism is and and what it is not right so we will not need to see the timesheets for your team we will not need to see any pay slips or travel invoices we will not need to see the calculation of your actual costs but of course it is good practice and we recommend it always to keep it in your records for about five to six years after the project ends. What we will need to see uh, is that you performed as you kind of promised you would perform in your individual follow-up plan. And that's why it is crucial at the beginning of the project to get your individual follow-up plan right. And that is why you will not be left alone with this task. And that is why, as Andre said, uh, YEP will provide you with solid support here in the definition of your individual follow-up plan. So for the lump sum, we will need to see what in general, what we need to see is some kind of technical documents, reports, prototypes, deliverables. We need to see that uh, that the work uh, was done according to the plan, right? Can we have the next slide, please? Okay, and and specifically for the deep tech uh, incubators. Uh, program if we go deeper into the payment arrangements. As you already know, the program provides the funding of up to 25,000 uh, euro. Uh, of course, the funding limit um, is 60,000 euros in all USC uh, support programs. And, um, and 
basically the grant you will be paid will be based on the budget you indicated in the full proposal. So on this cost estimation you indicated in your full proposal. Okay. So that's why we said that it, it's up to 25,000 euros, but it will depend on your cost uh, estimate. The cost categories uh, that you will need to consider are, of course, personal costs, travel costs, other direct costs, um, and overheads. These are the four categories. And everything you see highlighted in yellow in this slide is extremely important. So not any travel cost, but the cost related to the project implementation. So the costs directly related to those 12 weeks of the Deep Tech Incubators program. Okay. The same with other direct costs. So purchase costs um, of goods, equipment, services. But again, those which are directly linked to the performance of your project under Seeds of Bravery, under Deep Tech Incubators program for those specific 12 weeks you will be in the program. And then uh, we are using the 25% flat rate for, um, for overheads uh, calculated from the personal travel and other direct costs um, together. Okay. And then as we already mentioned, uh, the grant is paid upon assessment, positive assessment, so validation of the documents you deliver throughout the program. And uh, next slide, please. Uh, so what does it, what does this journey look like for you in terms of, let's say, compliance and payments? So uh, once we finish the whole selection process, we sign the subgrant agreement with you, so-called so SGA uh, for short. And at this moment, you become the beneficiary of the UACs uh, project. Okay, You sign the agreement with uh, the coordinator of the project acting on behalf of the whole consortium. And this happens once your selection is fully confirmed. Then the first milestone for you in the project will be the definition of the individual follow-up plan, which has to be submitted um, within the first four weeks after SGA signature. Um, and what follows is the validation of IFP. So this document, of course, will be prepared uh, with your mentor, uh, YEP will be managing this, but then it will have to be validated as well. And the second milestone, um, that the final one that you will be submitting within 12 weeks uh, of, of the program is the feasibility study. And then mm, what are the minimum requirements for this uh, deliver deliverable? It's very hard to say in general because every project will be different. Every project will be well specific uh, for your needs and well the KPIs and milestones and the acceptance criteria included in the IFP will be very specific for your project for your company. Okay, so. Uh, basically the minimum requirements and the acceptance criteria are defined at the stage of individual follow-up plan definition. Okay, That's why I said at the beginning that it's crucial to get this individual follow-up plan right. Okay, uh, And then when you submit your feasibility study as the final deliverable, of, of the project, then the milestone evaluation happens. Andre has already mentioned the criteria. So there, there, there are three. So the quality of the documents um, you provide, how you performed against, um, against the, the indicators included in, in your IFP, and then did you, did you comply with the, the deadline, okay? And uh, we have a, the whole scoring methodology. You can check it in the guide for applicants. Um, it's um, described in detail there. But basically, there, there's a threshold um, for passing this milestone. And this is seven points. 
And once your milestone has been evaluated by internal consor consortium evaluators, then there is the next step, the second step for the consortium, there's the validation of the result, and then we proceed with the payment. So it's always the selection committee acting on behalf of the co whole consortium that has to validate the payment, right? Uh, so, of course, these are our internal processes. You will not be concerned with that. Your job will be to submit individual follow-up plan, follow it, work with the mentors, and then submit the feasibility plan. I'm just mentioning that there's a lot going on behind the scenes for you. So you also realize that it will take us at least maybe two weeks to transfer the payment to you from the moment it is the payment is validated, right? So there is a whole process uh, also going on behind releasing the payment, okay? And I think this is my last slide. Am I right, Jana? Yes. And also yeah. I'll be happy to answer, yes, any questions you may have uh, by the end, right? Thank you. Thank you so much, Maria, for your part of overview. Uh, and we're moving to the next speaker and our next part of Info Day matchmaking activities. And I would like to invite Carolina Ferreira da Silva, Plug and Play Tech Center Senior Partner Success Associate, to the stage. Carolina, you're welcome. Thank you, Jana. And thank you, everyone. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, after this great introduction from Maria and Andri on Deep Tech Incubator, happy to give a bit more details what you can expect from matchmaking activities. Uh, you could already go directly to the next slide, please. So uh, we as a, as a consortium are a, a rather large consortium. Uh, we have a, a wide European reach, and that is maybe one of the um, most impactful things that we would like to support all Seeds of Bravery uh, startups with that, uh, that participate in all of our programs. Today, specifically, I will uh, speak about how you, uh, as participants in the Deep Tech Incubator, could um, yeah, receive value from matchmaking activities. Uh, we try to create a, a rather wide scope for matchmaking. We understand you know, that matchmaking is going to be uh, based on the individual needs of each company, based on the needs and the goals and the milestones that you will write in the IFP, which uh, was so well explained by Maria and Andri. Uh, and of course, we also need to strive for matchmaking interactions that make mo most sense on both sides of the table. So any stakeholder that you are sitting in front could be a relevant stakeholder, but for us, matchmaking will really be focused on also the, the stakeholders, the goals, the milestones that you will write in your IFP so that it is really tied to uh, the, the current uh, goals that you are working on for the growth of your company. What we identify as stakeholders, we keep as a, as a wide definition. So you can consider stakeholders as corporates, investors, uh, CVC, so corporate venture capital arms, accelerator programs, government institutions, and this can be anything from uh, or anyone from government uh, institutions who give out grants, government institutions that give support in soft landing, in market access, in, uh, in tax or legal uh, support for different countries. We also cannot forget research institutions, universities, and also innovation agencies. Next to this is also a wide range of, uh, of other actors in the whole of the European Union and, uh, and beyond that can contribute towards the growth of you as a startup. Our goal is really to leverage as many opportunities as possible from the consortium, from the EU ecosystem, and as well bridge this to the global ecosystem to ensure that we give you the most relevant matchmaking opportunities uh, as possible. So to conclude on this slide, most important is that your matchmaking journey and the journey that you participate on uh, during the, your deep tech uh, incubation program will be entirely uh, tailored to what you will write in your IFP. Uh, and we will do this closely with you in the onboarding of, of your company into the deep tech incubation program. Next to that, uh, matchmaking is not a specific program tied to uh, 
to a specific timeline, we will remain uh, the, the process open during your entire participation in Seeds of Bravery. So once you are uh, onboarded onto a batch of uh, Deep Tech Incubator, we will do the onboarding of the IFP, and then we will commence your matchmaking activities, which can be ongoing until the end of the Seeds of Bravery mandate, which would be October. September 2025, end of September 2025. And this is important because we understand that at the beginning of your, uh, in this case, incubation journey, you might not be ready to, to yet go to the table and sit around the table with potential stakeholders, but it is something that we would prepare you to uh, during the incubation period as well to ensure that when you are ready to meet stakeholders, uh, whether it's potential customers, potential investors, potential accelerator programs, that you are also ready to, to speak with them and have all of the relevant uh, materials that are required for that. Next slide, please. To have a very simple understanding of what is matchmaking and what is your matchmaking journey within uh, this uh, program, we would like to separate this into two types of, of uh, elements, so to say. So on the one hand is what I have just explained is your tailored matchmaking journey. And on this slide, we outline the different steps that you can expect of participating in this matchmaking journey. We will have to ensure, and this is our job as a consortium and, and the onboarding of you into, into the uh, Deep Tech Incubator, that we do a very structured onboarding with your IFP that also creates relevant links to your matchmaking needs. We will have matchmaking officers that are represented by uh, the consortium partners responsible for matchmaking that are connected very closely to Yep and Andri in this case as the as the IFP owner of the Deep Tech Incubation uh, Program. And we will ensure that we identify the matchmaking needs during the IFP procedure uh, to make sure that we don't miss any uh, future opportunities for matchmaking and we understand your goals, your ambitions from the beginning. As I mentioned, matchmaking interactions will be ongoing with stakeholders depending on those interactions that we identify during your IFP. And next to that, there are also other initiatives from consortium partners around the table that can support with additional matchmaking uh, needs. One of those is onboarding into Playbook by Plug and Play. This is our proprietary uh, database for matchmaking with our corporate partner ecosystem. So we will find for you the relevant corporate partners that are uh, that are open to meeting with you for discussion of potential partnerships or, uh, yeah, you know, using, uh, yeah developing partnerships together with potential corporate partners. But next to that, we will also expose our Seeds of Bravery startups to our corporate ecosystem to ensure that there is also a two-way street for matchmaking. It's not only about who you want to match with, but also who corporate partners uh, would potentially want to match with from our Seeds of Bravery programs. Uh, as I mentioned, there will be other connections to other Seeds of Bravery activities. I don't want to give all of it away. Uh, my colleague Peter will explain this uh, also in the next session in the Access to Investors. But next to that is also uh, a great participation that we have as Seeds of Bravery at various uh, events, conferences, meetups, small networking moments that we will collect as a consortium to ensure you guys don't miss any of those opportunities. A very important aspect of completing the matchmaking journey is that we do a short follow-up. So based on the matchmaking interactions we identify in the IFP, we will follow up with you before completing your incubation program to check how each matchmaking journey uh, was completed and what were the results that you got out of it, and also address any additional supports that we can give you with these specific matchmakings. Next to the tailored matchmaking journey, to ensure that we still do not miss any of the global opportunities available to, to startups, we will send out a monthly digest. This will be uh, coordinated by our partner IOP. And this is, again, uh, leveraging consortium events, so uh, events, activities where we as Seeds of Bravery are, are participating in. But it will also be a collection of activities that all of our uh, more than 15 partners are engaging in outside of Seeds of Bravery as well. So we, as a as very uh, diverse consortium, are participating in many other initiatives outside of Seeds of Bravery. And this is also uh, an access that we ensure to give to our Seeds of Bravery startups to, again, foster relationships with uh, the EU ecosystem, but as well, not forgetting the global ecosystem as well, uh, which partners like Plug and Play, 
uh, have a wide reach as well to give access to events, pitch uh, pitch moments, access to other conferences, booths, etc. We will be leveraging certain networks also like the European Enterprise Network, the Global uh, Consortium Partner Networks, and of course, since we also are well connected to other uh, ecosystems around the world, we will essentially create this access for you via this monthly digest. I hope to have sufficiently given a good introduction to a matchmaking journey. Uh, of course, it's hard to measure, you know, what matchmaking will look like until we define your IFP. Uh, but it is our uh, utmost goal to ensure that the matchmaking is a, a tailored journey to each of you as an individual organization uh, and to help you have the impact that you would like to do. So thank you. Thank you so much, Carolina. First of all, for your energy and how you explain everything in this part. It's really cool. And I hope that everyone will like and love to go to your program. <laughs> okay, let's move to our next speaker. And I would like to invite Peter Thurston, CEO at Accelerate, uh, with uh, him part access to investors and accelerators community. Peter, you're welcome. Thank you so much. And uh, Carolina, you have a fan in me, so uh, I will uh, apply for matchmaking if I'm allowed to, but uh, let's figure that out afterwards. So <laughs> I'm uh, I'm Peter. Uh, I'm the CEO and founder of, uh, of Accelerates. Uh, Accelerates is an uh, early stage uh, venture fund based in the uh, Nordics, more specifically in Denmark, but actually does uh, pan-European uh, investments. Uh, through our fund. So we basically invest in what we call pre-traction first-time founders. Uh, so at the point where uh, not a lot of other uh, investors are willing uh, to, uh, to, uh, to take the chance on a, uh, on a startup. I founded a couple of companies uh, before, uh, Accelerate myself, and I've been through the process of trying to uh, raise funding. Uh, and I always found that process uh, both uh, tedious and uh, and most of all, not really, really transparent. So as a startup, uh, you're trying to raise money at a point in uh, in time. Uh, you connect to a lot of investors. Uh, you get a lot of no's or maybes or basically also uh, sometimes even not, uh, even not any answers uh, from the investors. And that has always been such a frustration for, uh, for, 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 for myself in that journey of trying to raise uh, money. So as part of this project, uh, we had the idea of say, could we actually develop something that made the process even more uh, transparent and made it more, uh, more sufficient in order to find the investors and potential accelerators that would fit us as a startup or actually you as a, as a startup. So we have developed a, a, a platform uh, that that can take you through at least some of the process. It's not a guarantee to raise funding funding through the process, but it's a it's a process. Or using the platform would actually guide you in the direction of uh, of uh, potential investors and accelerators that are most likely uh, to invest into your startup. As part of your acceleration process with Yep, I'm sure that you will get a lot of insight in how investors think. You will also get exposed to investors. But of course, Europe has a ton of uh, both early states and later states investors has a ton of, uh, of accelerators. And we're trying to do that a little bit more transparent. So we build a platform consisting of the following. First of all, it basically holds an investment readiness test. And the idea here is that you can test your, your startup a little bit. Are we actually ready uh, to raise uh, either pre-seed funding or, uh, or seed funding? This investment risk that readiness test is developed uh, on based on two things. One on uh, our own uh, our own fund. Uh, so it's basically say, well, what are our investments criteria, and how do we look at at, uh, at startups? So by taking uh, the investment readiness test, you can get a good idea of whether you are ready to raise money at the pre seed or uh, actually uh, the, the the seed stage. And through that test, you will also get a little bit of guidance and say, okay, you have a missing, you have some missing links within your uh, within your startup on the team side, on the product development part, or on the understanding on the market. And these are things that probably have to be uh, uh, be uh, be kind of proven or developed even further to increase your chance of uh, of having an investment. The second part of our platform is what we call an investor curator. 
And this is where, at least in my mind, it gets a little bit more uh, a little bit more interesting, because you can get tons of lists of uh, of investors and going on Google and searching for pre seed funding or uh, seed funding, and then you will get a long list of uh, of uh, potential funds that could uh, invest. Uh, into your startup. The problem with that is that most of the funds either have a specific geography that they are focusing on, they have a specific stage that they focus on, on they have specific uh, technologies. And trawling through all their web pages is actually really hard to figure out who of those would actually fit my uh, my startup. So we try to solve that problem with uh, with what we call an investor curator. And through that curator, you can actually enter some information on your startup. So you can basically say, well, we are raising a million euro or half a million euro. And then uh, the, uh, the curator will filter uh, the funds that actually invest that type of money. Because you, you will see a lot of venture funds that doesn't even invest half a million or a million euro because they want to invest 10 million euros. So if you come with a suggestion of an investment of half a million, you will never, ever get through. You will probably never, ever uh, get an answer. The second thing that you can filter on is basically technology. So you can say, well, we have uh, uh, artificial intelligence or we are building hardware. Uh, we are a life science company or whatever you are doing. And then again, it filters and say, well, which of those investors have focused on that specific uh, technology uh, area? And then again, you can use uh, geography and to figure out, well, does that investor actually invest outside of their own geography? So if they are based in Luxembourg, uh, do they do investments outside of, uh, of, uh, of Luxembourg? Or do you have to be uh, situated in Luxembourg to attract money uh, from that? And then the last part of that investor curator that we are building and will be building continuously is that we actually interviewed some of the investors. So we went to them and had that interview and say, well, what is it that you invested? What are your criteria? What are your investment thesis? So, so how do you actually look at, the, look at the startups? And those interviews you can also find on the platform. So you get a little bit of better uh, uh, idea of what these investors are actually looking for. So it's a tool to try to curate the, uh, the investors. A similar tool we've done for uh, accelerators across Europe not including all uh, accelerators, but a similar similar tool where you can filter accelerator based on, well, are you uh, interested in an accelerator that also invests into your company? What are the terms that they have? What are their geog geography? And what are they focusing on in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, technology? Then the fourth thing that we have at the, on the platform is kind of what we call pitch stake heaven or, or sharing. Uh, and, and there we have uh, two uh, opportunities. One is that we actually collected a lot of pitch sticks from uh, alumni founder uh, startups of uh, Accelerates, but also other uh, startups that uh, raised uh, pre-seed and seed money. And you can go through those uh, pitch stick and get an inspiration of what does a pitch stick that have, ra that have raised money, what does that look like? Again, you can use filters on, on, on that. So you can search for software as a service or deep tech startup uh, uh, on the, and get those pitch stick. But you could also go into individual slides. So basically, show me the best slide um, that, uh, that, uh, that uh, shows the market size or the solution or the team. Uh, then you can get filter uh, through that and get those individual slides uh, with a rating on the slide. Then the next thing that we have is kind of like two learning paths. So a little bit of video content, but most importantly, including tools that you can use in order to start your process and say, okay, if I'm going to convince a, a, an investor uh, in the, uh, again, pre-seed or seed stage, what is it, what is it that I, I need to have in place? And those two learning paths take you through the model and how do you think and how do you, how do you basically convince an investor? And then the last bit that we have is a little bit of inspiration that we constantly build through uh, ex-founders. Uh, so uh, people and individuals that have been through the journey uh, where they give their insight on how to develop technology, how to develop the market, how to build KPIs and so forth. This platform in the beginning will have all the elements, but throughout the process and throughout the project and in the coming month, we will uh, uh, develop it even further on the content side. So adding more and more investors, more and more accelerators, more and more pitch stakes, and so on as we uh, go along. 
You can actually already enter if you like. So uh, you can go to uh, the web uh, uh, address that is uh, shown here and get a little bit of idea. If you already applied for uh, Seeds of Bravery, you probably did that using the one pass. And if you have a one pass, then you can uh, use that uh, to enter the platform. If you don't, then you just enter a, a short, uh, uh, some short uh, information on your email address and other things uh, that is needed into, uh, into the platform. It is work in progress, uh, but you can already give a, get a feeling of how it's, uh, it's uh, working at this point. That would be it for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter, for your speech. And now we're moving to our last part for today in four days, market discovery and market fast track programs. And I would like to invite Fiona Laval, marketing manager and UU project coordinator, Axis Big. And I would like to invite all our uh, participants to give us a question if you want, because for right now I see there is no question for us, but if you want, you can put them into message box. Fianula, the stage is your, you're welcome. Thank you, Jana. Thank you. And uh, hello, everyone. Delighted to be here this afternoon. So we can immediately go to the next slide. Um, we are coordinating two um, two programs within the UA Seeds uh, Seeds of Bravery um, project, and both of which are open to quite quite a wide audience. The first area program I'm going to talk about today is our market discovery workshops. In the market discovery workshops, we are going to run twenty workshops during the life life of the project over two years, covering twenty different geographies. Um, these will be recorded as we go, but we will um, and we will be starting these next month. And details of registration details and and why you would attend will be shared with the UAC network over the coming weeks. What are the market discovery workshops? Well, these are giving you an overview of each of the countries, the startup ecosystem, infrastructure, and the economy within that country. The market opportunity that exists within that country, this will cover particularly the sectors and the industries that are of particular interest to those startups applying through the Seeds of Bravery project, but also the sectors that are particularly uh, strong in those countries. When I say strong, I mean they may have a startup ecosystem, they may have clusters, they may have investors who particularly invest in these areas. Then we will also look at universities and third level institutions. We know there are Ukrainian startups based all over Europe and these uh, universities and, and institutions would allow and enable startups to avail of research facilities, R&D facilities and um, attend accelerators and incubators. And then the final area of the market discovery workshop is the investment landscape in each of these countries. So how developed is it? Is it mainly angel investing, VC investing? Are there other um, investment vehicles that are used by these startups in these countries? And, and, how do these, um, and, and how do these work for startups? And how buoyant is the investment market throughout the, um, throughout the country? Very important as well is to look at the state and local supports that exist for, um, for startups. In Ireland, there are particular agencies that are locally based that provide mentoring, supports, training to startups. Then there are um, uh, agencies and government supports that are on a national basis that may help start startups and um, start an office and um, employ people have a look at visas so we will look at what are the regulatory environment with either growing your business setting up a subsidiary of your business or simply engaging in the market there and growing customers or partnerships so why would you attend the market discovery workshop? Well, it is really to enable you to gain an understanding of the European innovation ecosystem. As I said, we will be looking at 20 different geographies alongside my partners. So we who have a very in-depth knowledge of each of their countries. These workshops will be generally around three hours long. They are also open to anybody to attend. So really we encourage 
um, agencies who support startups. Um, we encourage um, all startups. We encourage investors. We encourage everybody to attend these workshops um, where I think they will gain a really good understanding of each of the geographies in which we are targeting. So and um, the next slide will show us the current schedule. We have currently a schedule of six different um, uh, workshops that are scheduled. Ireland will begin um, on May 23rd. Then we go to Finland in June, Sweden also in June. Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania will be in July. Then Benelux in July and Denmark will be at the end of August. In June, we will release the details of the workshops that will be from it will be scheduled from September to December. So as I say, um, details of these will shortly be shared on how you can register for these workshops. Now, we can move now to the Market Fast Track program slide. So the Market Fast Track program um, basically will allow 10 startups over two weeks to build a go-to-market strategy that is geographically based. So again, the Market Fast Track programs, similarly to the Market Discovery programs, are geographically based. So really what you're doing here is uh, we have a number of workshops which will look at market value proposition, the market intelligence or the market opportunity that exists in those markets. But here we will be looking at it on an individual basis with each startup. And then we will develop alongside mentors, local mentors, and um, a go-to-market strategy that will allow that startup to really engage with that geography, to create partnerships, to grow their company, to, to grow their, their headcount. And then the final thing we'll look at within these market fast track programs is, is financial and investment opportunities that exist both locally and internationally. There will be 20 of these programs throughout the project, again, based on the 20 different geographies that the project covers. 10 startups can participate in each project. And you will be, as a startup, you will be um, uh, generally proposed by your mentor, who we spoke about in the matchmaking, um, to attend these or to participate in these. There will be um, four workshops. And then following each workshop, there will be um, homework, basically. And there will be to-dos for each of the startups to do, which will then be discussed on a one-to-one -one basis with each of the mentors and with each of the startups. The market fast track programs will then be, uh, will then lead to a possible pitch at our demo days. We will be holding 20 demo days throughout the lifetime of the project. Both the market fast track programs and demo days will begin in in September. And this is a really excellent opportunity to pitch your uh, startup and your um, to pitch your investment pitch, which will be developed through the Master Fast Track programs and through the, um, the pitch training to really pitch these to the very wide audience of investors, to corporates, um, to VCs and to, to many, many people. Again, registration for the Market Fast Track programs will be shared with you once you have um, registered for the, for the, um, the project. And that is it from me, Yana. Thank you so much, Fiona, for your part. For right now, I see there is no question for us today. That is really strange. So if you have any question, you can put them into the message box. So you have a chance to see the answers from our speakers. Yana, if there are no questions, can I just have a comment, a general comment? Of course. Uh, or of just course, a Maria. general recommendation for everyone. So if, uh, if you are already at this stage that you are working on your full proposal or you are thinking of applying uh, to the program, our general recommendation is read all the documents very carefully read the guide for applicants, read the frequently asked questions, uh, read a few times what the evaluation criteria are and what kind of aspects we will be evaluating in your proposal. Um, because I think this is, this is the basic thing you can do before you submit your proposal just to know how you can relate to the scope of the project to the scope of the support program 
and also uh, how you how you respond to the questions we ask you in the full proposal form and how you relate to the evaluation criteria. Also, one piece of advice, the more information you include in the full proposal, of course, if relevant, the easier it is for evaluators to, to assess the, the information provided, right? So this is just, I think, uh, the learning we have after closing the first cut of date. And uh, it's, it's just a general piece of advice to everyone who's thinking of applying. Thank you so much, Maria, for your comments. And I see there is no question for right now. So I think that uh, we're um, do, done the great job for today. So thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, our speakers and participants. I hope that this info day will help you uh, to do your best with applications and with all another stuff uh, of this uh, program. So thank you so much and see you in the next info days. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you, Jana. Bye. Thank you, everyone.